Today, I'm joined by one of my Inner Circle members, Steve Thompson. Steve is the director of The Boiler Doctor, a plumbing and eating business based in York that specializes in boiler breakdowns, boiler servicing, and boiler installations. And that is the end of what would have been a scripted introduction. You see, I'm going to be honest with you here. For the last hour and a half, I've been trying to script out this introduction as I do at the beginning of every episode. And every time I script something out, I scribble it out and I start again. And I don't know how or what to do to introduce Steve and what he's about to share with you. Because this is a major, major deal for Steve and his closest of family. Because over the last 12 years, Steve has been battling an addiction with prescription drugs. And these, this addiction has caused him, his business and his family no end of pain and heartache along that journey. So Steve wants to come on here to be open, honest and transparent and share with you that he's had some challenges, he's made some mistakes, and he's had some mental health challenges and issues that he's had to overcome. And he's doing it because he sincerely wants to help other trades or construction business owners that might be feeling like they're in a low place or they've hit rock bottom in the business and the life. And he wants to share with you that there is a way out of it if we can shift and change and develop our mindsets and get more involved in personal development. Because as you're going to hear from Steve, it's mindset and personal development that's helped claw him out of those deep, dark places that he once lived in, but has also helped him to build and grow and scale his business by a whopping 168% over the last 12 months and get him, his business, his life and his family to a complete new level that only four years ago sent an impossible fate. So please, no judgment on what Steve's going to share. He wants to do it. He's got no idea what reaction people are going to be giving him. But as you know, in our community, we're helpful, we're supportive, we're honest, we're open, we're transparent. I've been on my podcast and so is Steve on this. So, Steve, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Craig. I do appreciate you asking me onto this podcast because I've um, I've listened to all your previous po podcasts. So I was quite overwhelmed when you asked me to come on and share my story. Amazing, and thank you for coming on, Steve, and sharing it. And and I know deep down that you're a bit nervous and a little bit apprehensive about sharing your story, aren't you? I am, yeah. Yeah, you could say that again. So what? why now? What's the reason why you want to share this story now? What's the purpose behind it? Because I've been on such a journey um, and I've realised that there could be so many more people in this position that I could help, for one. And for two, I, I can draw a line in the sand and move on from that era almost. I've been on this journey and I sort of feel a bit held back by that. Uh, when if I could share it, get it out there, maybe help a few people, and um, and people know then it's it's done, it's a line in the sand, in, and it's it's gone. Okay. And what's the overall arching message that you want to get out across this episode? So for me, it's it's mindset and personal development, exactly the thing that's got me out of that. You know, um, working on myself daily, um, morning routine. Um, the, the the stuff that you teach, Craig, about mindset, personal development and consistently working on yourself and having the tools and techniques to overcome difficult situations. Yeah. All right. Well, listen, you've mentioned the word journey and chapters a couple of times. So as one's closing, another one's opening. Take us back to chapter number one, then, where this major demon and major problem an issue that you had in your life where did all that start? Take us back there. Let's start at the beginning. Let's work our way through. So I'd say it was around 2010, uh, still an apprentice plumber in 2010. And I literally, I'd, I'd got out of a car, 
sneezed and I, I pulled my back. And, and that's where this story all began. Well, so literally, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm laughing, but not at the situation. But it literally started like that. You just pulled your back. Just pulled my back. And, and at this point, I'm lifting boilers, radiators, you name it, I'm doing it. And I, I sneezed and pulled my back. Um, I, I, at that point, went to doctors and got some painkillers. The 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 painkillers that pre the prescribed me weren't strong enough, and uh, I needed something a little bit stronger. So you've gone to the doctors, you've pulled your bike, you've got these painkillers. If they're not working, then what what happened next? Then how? Because obviously you ended up in a pickle with this. So what happened next? So this went on for a week or two. Uh, I ended up there was no relief. It was just agony. I went to my nana's as I did every Friday. It took the family, took the kids. Um, and I went to my nana as my nana could see in my face I was in agony and I'm always this positive, happy, you know, happy as Larry could say I was a bit upset, I was a bit uh, struggling, picking kids up and she was like, what's up Stephen, you know, what's what's matter told her about this bad back and she she just said, look, I've got these uh, these tablets, do you want to try these I can't have them, they make me go a bit do lally, so uh, I don't like them so do, do you want to have these, and, and I did, you know, she was just being a nana just doing the, the the nana thing to do, you know. She was just trying to help me, uh, so I no way blame my nana for the whole of, of, of this. It was it was my doing, but uh, yeah, that's where it all began. My nana gave me these these tablets. So these tablets that she's given you, I, I take it were stronger prescribed painkillers that you were taking. So how many were you taking, and what happened from that point? So at that time, at, the, at 2010, uh, I'd, I started on just having two or three a day. Um, then it escalated to five or six and then eight or nine, you know, and it, it just upped and upped and upped as, as time went on. Um, and I ended up going to my doctors and getting them prescribed for me as well. So by the time I got to taking eight or nine a day, I then got my prescription and then obviously I doubled the amount. So it was easy for me to just take it take more and more and more. Um, so as the story unfolds, obviously we, 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 we end up on like 30 a day um, at the, the height of this. But yeah, at that point in 2010, probably between eight and 10. Right. Okay. And what, what happened with doctors then? Because did, did doctors not realize that you were popping these pills galore and, and that it was starting to negatively affect you? So, no. So, it, it, uh, at this point, so my nana realised, I think, that there was a problem because all the time I was going back for these, and my nana then was like, look, I can't, uh, I, I haven't got my prescription or something. She said, I can't, you know, so I felt guilty asking her. So that that stopped. And then I ended up going to the doctors because because I was taking so many at this point. It was like... Um, I was putting a prescription in every two or three days and the doctors never realised, I don't know whether it was their system at fault or what, but every two or three days I was putting a new prescription in that should have been every fortnight, getting a, a hundred tablets, so every hundred tablets every three days, um, taking about 30 a day and that just continued and continued and continued. So at what point did you realize that actually this has now become a problem this has now become an addict uh, 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 an addiction what, what happened how did it all unfold so i uh, probably at that point probably at like a couple of years in i was like i knew that i had this thing but i couldn't see no harm in it to be honest with you i was like well they make me feel good I, i'm very productive i can the, i called them the magic pill um, that was my name for him. So if, if I wanted to just lay down in bed and relax, I had one. If I wanted to um, do some work, I had some. You know, they sounded like the most amazing things. In reality, I had all that in me anyway. Like if you want if you want energy, you get up and make a start and you get the energy from that. You know, you make something exciting enough that you want to do it, you'll find the energy. You know, it weren't the tablet that was doing it. It was me that was doing it all along. I just had a belief that it was the tablet. Um but I suppose the next section in this story is the, the doctors called me in. So that was when I realised that that actually there's a problem here. And it was, they'd pull me in to review the medication that I'd had over the last year. So I'd had sort of um, 100 tablets every three days for, for, for over a year. 
which was cost, I'm ashamed to say it, but the NHS an absolute fortune. Cost, you know, it was thousands. So I had three doctors sat in the surgery all looking at me like, where have they gone? What have you been doing? We're seriously worried. If you've taken all these, this can have serious consequences. But if I'm honest, Craig, I didn't have no, I, I had no intentions at that point in stopping. I sat there and met up a load of crap that um, I was going to come off them and reduce a program and all this kind of stuff. But looking back in reality, I had no, no intentions at all in coming off them at that point. And other than your your nan, who else knew about this? Who, you know, close family, and and if anybody else did know about it, you know, what effects or negative effects were it starting to have on them? Because they must have been worried and concerned about you. So, how, how did this unfold? Well, I, I kept it as secret as as secret, like literally, I'd be pretending to my wife that. I, that it was as bad. I was hiding them in my vehicle. I was hiding them in my van. It was just like so dishonest and like not me, you know, because I'm a genuine, honest guy. It was so far away from me. It was unbelievable. It was just something that had crept in and crept in and crept in and got hold of me, you know. Um, I almost get emotional talking about this because it's so far from where I'm at now, you know. It's like um, unbelievable to even think. So, not very many people, Craig, at all, uh, I'd say. My nan obviously had concern. She'd spoke to my mum. My mum rang me up and had a conversation, and I sort of fluffed over it. So, yeah, it's not that bad. It's not, you know. Um, and, and that's how it was. Yeah. So, literally, I had such a small circle of people that knew. Yeah. It sounds to me like because these pills had been working and one, relieve the pain, but two, it, you're now addicted to them. And it sounds to me like you, you're almost sort of like fooling fooling yourself but almost brushing people off because you knew deep down that you needed these drugs and yeah. that they were you know they, they were they were you thought they were benefiting you you're almost convincing yourself that you needed them yeah. so at this point then when, when when did you set your business up then so you couple of years hammering these pills when did you set your business up so i set my business up when my um youngest daughter was born Tilly so 2013 um she was a week old um and I'd had enough at work I had pressure at work from every angle I was a an apprentice but a manager at the same time so once I qualified I was then just expected to be a manager um and I'd had enough I decided to set my own business up in 2013 done threw in the towel um at, at my job and set up my own business Right. And what, what did you set up doing in, initially with general plumbing or were it eating work? You know, what type of work did you do? So it, in the early days, I did everything that I could possibly get my hands on, to be totally honest. Um, I, I, I just I remember seeing a leaflet that I'd created from that that time. And it was like uh, it had every single service that a plumber could offer. Um, but I mean, even beyond that, I remember a builder asking me if I could build a block wall and I'm like, yeah, I'll build a block wall. You know, and it was just summer to, to, to get some money in the bank, basically. But I did, in terms of what I set my business up to do, everything plumbing and eating related. Yeah. Well, I mean, we do, don't we? Initially, we, we all do the same, don't we? You set up a business and it's, you're in survival mode, aren't you? As I call it, you've got to get through that survival stage. You take on an everything and anything yeah. but at this time then were you still were you still addicted to these painkillers at the time where you set your business up yeah yeah so so the doctors had put me on this reducer program and i was on this reducer program that was they took me off it was cocodamol i was on they put me on codeine so i didn't have the paracetamol basically the thing that was harming my body um and as time went on then tablets got reduced because it's a reducer program it's what you do so it's like one a week um which was pathetic really you know and reducing me one a week off 30 it's like 29 next week 28 next week you know it was it was, weren't a big enough jump to make any sort of difference whatsoever or in my brain it were it's like if i'm taking 28 i might as well have 30 you know that sort of mindset and um in that time i was finding other people i could buy them from um which it <laughs> It sounds crazy to say, Craig, but I found customers that I worked for that had them. And God knows how that conversation even arose. I can't, I just don't know. But I ended up buying them from people that I worked for, people that 
um, anybody that I could could um, find that could get them, and they'd go get their prescription, and then I'd buy their prescription. You know, it got unbelievable. So I mean, when you start to think about this and what's happening now at this point, it is. I mean, I mean, obviously, prescription drugs or painkillers. Yeah, it's a drug, regardless, in it. I mean, yeah, when yeah. you think about when you think about taking drugs or people taking drugs, you think of cocaine and heroin or whatever. But you know, th this is still the same. So now, now I suppose you're like. You, you need a deal almost like dealers you need oh, yeah. people to start feeding you drugs because because now the doctor is reducing it but you still need them is that right is that what that's, i'm hearing that's exactly right mate yeah so it it, it doesn't matter what it is what if, it, if there's somebody watching this that's that's alcohol coke what i don't know whatever that may be for you that addiction um it's exactly the same it's irrelevant uh, just because it's prescribed from a doctor don't make it any less harmful or any less, uh, you know, and, and that's probably another thing that I th was thinking, well, I've got, uh, I can get these from a doctor, so they, they can't be that bad, you know, um, but they did, they took over my life. Wow. So at this point then, what, is, is, it, is it still all positive from you taking the, the, the drugs or is any of this now starting to spiral out of control and you're having side effects and, things like that starting to happen so the only side effects i ever got really if i'm honest was when i stopped taking them so I, I used to say that i had to take these now to feel normal which was crazy you know it's like um i'm taking these things just to feel myself and it was like i was just mono all the time i was just like it was as if i, I there was no highs no lows no no in between i was just like coasting just totally coasting never a problem never do you know what i mean it was just like it, it's coasting 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 all the time and i use i use the word coasting quite a lot because i struggle how to describe that it was like it's like i was almost like a, a robot do you know just no no feelings no emotions no nothing so what's happening with your business then at this time because you said this is 2013 you, you set it up where are we now then? How many years into it are you still popping these pills, buying them from customers or wherever you can get your hands on? What's happening with your business? Where's your business at? So my business, I set up, like I said, in 2013. I carried on until 2018, I'd say, is the next steps. That's five years. Wow. That. And, and I mean, I'd be lying if I said I'd just flatlined that whole way because along that journey... I did meet people. I did have some success. I did, um, you know, I, I had a new van. I had, you know, there was there was all different things along that process, but I can't remember half of it, you know. And it's not like the the thing is, I, it was a secret. This so nobody knew, and I'm putting myself out there as this heating engineer, plumber. I'll do your bathroom. I'll do whatever. And of course, my customers don't know that I'm taking that. And it was the last thing I thought about when I went to bed. It was the first thing I thought about when I woke up. You know, what? Can, where can I get tomorrows from? Where can I get tomorrows from? Tomorrow morning, before I start work, I need to get some. Where can I get them from? Where can I get them from? And it's like just that pressure all the time. Of, and it's all I ever thought about. That's up first before anything. And then once I've got them, I think, right, I've got them. Now I can do this. You know, and, and it was just crazy. Re really, yeah. Really hard to talk about. So, in terms of your business, then you've so so you're now you're up to what 2018 ish, something like that. Yes. Are, are you still doing plumbing and eating, or have you diversified, or is it is it you on your own? Have you got a team? Where where are you at? So it's me completely on my own still, um, and I, I had odd uh, people that would help me from time to time. Do you know what I mean? I had an odd lad on a on a big job or whatever but nothing no no staff um and then yeah 2018 i met uh i met a tyler who i was his best man at his wedding great kid um love him to bits and we're still real best mates now but i met jason the tyler um and he was basically he had a tiling business and he wanted to uh become a plumber shall we say and that happened over the course of like six months we worked together he did the tiling, I did the the plumbing in bathrooms, and he sort of saw what I did and and knew that he wanted to do it. And he was like, just approached me and said, "Look, 
can I, you know, if I go to college, will you train me almost, you know? Uh, but we got on really well. I was like, I couldn't see a problem with it. I thought, yeah, let's do it, you know? So, so what happened then? Did you go into business together or did you just start working with each other and splitting profits? How, how did that work? Yeah, so I had so many stories about joining up with people and that it was just a bad idea over time because you end up wanting to go in different directions. And uh, from the very early on, I was honest with him with that. You know, he wanted to set up with me at that point. Um, and over years, this has come back again for full circle that, that he wanted to do it again at another point. But it was sort of like, I've, I'm not into that. I don't want to partner up. So, yeah, I sort of said, look, we'll have our own separate businesses. I will train you up as a plumber and we'll just split the profits down the middle. And what happened from that point then? Because if it's a case of just splitting profits down middle, surely it gets to a point where one's putting a bit more work in than other or other wants a different direction or how did that end up panning out? So we did about, I'd say, two years, exactly two years of doing just bathrooms. So we, and the the beauty of it for me was at that point was Jason did all the organizing. So all the headache from a bathroom, the bits that I ate, you know, the, the sorting a tiler out, plaster out, uh, skip out, ordering materials, all that. He just took up that all on himself. I just turned up and did the job like I was working for somebody. And it just took away all the pressure immediately. So like he did all that organizing and then uh, we split the money down the middle. So I was making a hefty chunk every every week out of each job doing hardly any work. You know, I, just, I turn up, do my plumbing and go home and, and make an absolute fortune from it. Well, I know he's not with you now, so something must have changed along that along that journey. So what did change? I mean, and, and did Jason know that you were addicted to these painkillers and these prescription drugs? Not at this point. Um, he does now, but... Uh, uh, in 2020, he sort of got the gist. And obviously, when you're working with somebody every single day and you're trying to sneak these things, you know, like, and, and I was on so many a day, be like, what's that? But, oh, it's just, I've got a bit of a date, mate. But you can only say that so many times before he's like, you're addicted to them. And it, and the, the the good thing about Jason is he is brutally honest with me. He's a, he's a, he's a true, what I call a true friend, you know, like when, I, when I'm in trouble, he knows when I, you know, when something's not right, he'll call me out on it. Um, and he did, he called me out on it and I, I had to be honest with him. And he was one of the first people I told about it, to be honest. And what, and how did he react to that then? It, it did, did that, was that the end of that relationship or? Cause no, like... Jason, Jason really wanted to help me. Jason was like, look, I, I get it. Um, it's, it's something that you're going through. I'll help you sort of overcome it. And, and what can I do basically? Uh, it didn't see me in any different light, which I was quite shocked at. Cause I just thought, oh, that's it now. Um, and yeah, we just um, we just carried on as we were, and it was sort of at that point that I knew I I, I just I couldn't carry on with them anymore. You know, it was twenty twenty we're at now, so we just hit twenty twenty. Covid's um, Covid's it, and I knew something drastic needed to change. Um, so yeah. So what did change then? How how did it all change? Because. I, and I, obviously, I know from coaching you, you know, what, what's happened from that point on. So something must have changed, Some a catalyst, a trigger, something's happened. So what were it? So COVID it and all the work cancelled. Uh, I had no work in. Uh, we, had, we had bathrooms lined up for God knows how long, but obviously nobody knew it was March 2020. Everybody's like, uh, world's just shut down and, and all our jobs cancelled. And I remember having a conversation with Jason and he's like, um, what are we going to do? Right. And, and I'd gone home and my, my wife, Emma, had said, Steve, uh, what are we doing? She's like, your business is, is sort of non-existent, like what you're playing at. And I hadn't even given it a second thought, but for the last two years, I'd been building Jason's brand, Jason's business, Jason's everything, although I'm thinking I've got all this money coming in and it's all well and good and it's great. So I had to have that conversation with Jason and say, look, I need to take a back seat from this because I either go all in on my business or I jack it in and, and I might as well work for you, you know. 
Um, but I didn't want that. I'm entrepreneur, entrepreneurial, if that's that the right word, but at heart, you know, it's what I want to do. I love being my own boss. I love doing my own thing. And um, yeah, so so March 20, 2020, I've decided that I needed help with that and with my business. So this help then, where did you find this help initially? Because you're still, you're still addicted to pres prescription drugs. You've just had an easy ride by it sounds of it with, with Jason in the fact that he was mopping up all type of work that you didn't like or didn't enjoy doing. So it was just folded on your lap. Now COVID's kicks in. So what happened? So I, I knew that I had, I had to build my business, my brand, uh, and I knew I had to do it online because I could see I was a I was a literally plank of wood in the van writing addresses on it. it weren't even a notepad for me. I was that disorganized. It was it was I couldn't even call it a business. You know, it was just sort of um, somebody had ring, and I think then it was too easy. You know, I, you, you people just there was that much work out there that, you know, and I was doing everything that it just landed at my feet, you know? So I think it was so easy pre COVID. And then, um, I knew that things had to change and I had to, um, do some work on the business and getting myself online and out there. Bear in mind, I didn't even do Facebook or anything then. So I had no idea how none of this worked, you know? And where did you find this help then? Because I know that, you, you know, you, you started getting into a little bit of coaching, didn't you? Which yeah. triggered all this lot off. So where did you find that initial coaching? How did that come about? So I was literally, uh, I joined Facebook and I was, uh, I was just scrolling and an ad come up to uh, an electrician's community, create a leaflet. And um I created a leaflet online and I had no idea how to do that, by the way. I was totally like, I couldn't, I couldn't knock up a leaflet. I, I couldn't do anything. So I, yeah, I joined that and, and created the leaflet and ended up joining that program for about a year. And what did that program teach you? Bearing in mind, bearing in mind, you say an electrician, but you're an eating engineer. So I suppose it's not even obviously the similarities. I get that. You're both untidy. You never clean up after yourselves. Yeah, I get yeah. that. But, but yeah, what but I mean is, what I mean is, you know, you, you're a, an eating engineer, a plumber in an electrical community. So what did you learn? How did it all start to come through? So I used the, the group to i just flipped everything so when they was talking about a fuse board i just talked about i just used it as a boiler when they was talking about the small jobs like a socket it was a boiler service for me so i just flipped everything and it made me i, I quickly realized that it made me think a little bit harder um and, and it was only minuscule but it made me my things was different to everybody else's in the group because i was a heating engineer uh and so i used it to my advantage and, and i and i went all in on this thing i was like i'm gonna help as many people as i can in that group and be part of the community for one and i'm gonna do exactly what they tell me to do and i'm gonna i'm, I'm gonna make my business work at this at this point craig um i'm still on the tablets i'm still taking the tablets 2020 uh, i'm still while i'm going through this this first year so you're in this first year you're in with a gang of, uh electricians you're trying to turn their lingo and their examples in into your own you've got involved with community were there any coaching or any type of mentoring that were going off behind scenes to try and help you other than sort of like pointing you in the right direction yeah so i joined a there was like a mastermind group i joined which was uh, like a, it was online, so it was like a mastermind roundtable, uh, help each other with the businesses, that kind of thing. So I had masterminds going on, um, and I could really see the value in coaching and mentoring um, because it, things started to change, things started to happen within my business, I started getting a good name locally within the area, I started to become more organised. I started, you know, all these little things I was doing, uh, I could see an improvement, and so could my customers and people around me. So I knew that this was working, just taking advice from people that had done it before. 
So how long were you doing this this for then? Because this is pivotal, isn't it, in, in your transformation on getting off the drugs. How long were you in that community for and using it? Um, I'd say about a year, just over a year. Um, so, so we're like 2021, so we're still COVID. Um, and I, I did a year in there, um, which obviously I, I then, once I'd... I'd probably about 15 months maybe uh and they there was a charity event that you was part of Craig actually that's where I first come across you and it was sort of um a, a help the heroes loads of coaches all get together and put a thing and I, and I, I think I can't remember it's like 50 quid and you get all these different coaching lessons for everyone and it was for charity and I paid for that and I watched all the um watched all the different coaches and um it was at that point that I knew I was desperate. I knew I needed to stop this thing. And I, I knew coaching, mentoring worked. I need, and I, I knew I needed somebody that was going to call me out on my bullshit, basically, and, and get me off this, this thing. So this is interesting, really, because what you're saying here is you went into, into, this, into lockdown, as we all did, as, a, as just a... A, a, a busy plumbing and eating engineer that had sort of like already kissed goodbye to his business because you've been focusing on somebody else's business. You're still addicted to drugs, but you've joined this community. Would you say that's the first, first time you've thought of actually I can do things in a different way. I don't just mean from a drugs point of view. I mean, from a business point of view, is this where the mindset shift initially started in this electrician's forum yeah it did and I, I was getting people that was relating really well to me and i couldn't believe it like like i would i actually won um the 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 member of the year award you know and i got like this little trophy and i was overwhelmed by it because i was thinking i'm just steve like i'm just doing my thing and it was like people actually relate to me really well and it seems like the 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 I, that come to me sort of um uh energy almost and it made me think i can be somebody i can do something and um yeah it was that point that i decided to get to to really go deep on the mindset personal development because as with any coach it's mindset personal development is what's gonna push you push you through the difficult times for me um get you through every day you know you know winning um and I wanted to know more about that. So I started reading first was my first little thing into personal development and mindset. And that was just reading. Um, it, it was it was money books, first of all. So it was like rich dad, poor dad, that kind of thing. And then you start getting into your Tony Robbins books, that kind of thing. And and, and it progressed from there. So that was the, the my first little delve into mindset was just audible, audio books. Yeah, yeah. Do you know, it's amazing, isn't it? You, you know, I, I'm just starting to picture it all unfolding for you. You didn't realise that this existed, this sort of like personal development, this mindset, this help, this support, these communities, these groups, coaching. Because I didn't, when I started all this 18 years ago, my coaching, coaching journey, I just thought it was me against the world. I never knew all this existed. And, and in today's day and age, it's more readily available than what it were 18 years when I started. I mean, people used to laugh their heads off at you when you started talking about mindset and personal development. They'd, you'd just get laughed out of room. Now it's acceptable. So this is the first catalyst that sparks something inside you. So talk to us about the next step and the next journey of coaching and how this helped you. So I went to a, a mindset specific coach who was part of that group that I've told you about that, that charity event. And he, um, I, I related to him really well. He, he sort of just, you know, you know, when you watch somebody, you think, yeah, I like this guy. And, um, I paid for his, his, his basic program, um, because I was unsure. I thought I'll just go for the budget program. And it was new to me stuff that he was teaching it was like um journaling master in your mind all that woo woo stuff that you think oh yeah right you know because you do you doubt it even though I, I paid for the program doubting it you know uh and he'd give us some print out things that we had to journal every day and i'm like journaling it's like what 10 year old girls do you know 
not what what you do as a bloke and owning a business, is it? You know, I, I didn't know that that was a thing. Um, and it was almost embarrassing. I'm printing these leaflets out, like leaflets out, and my wife's like, "What are you doing?" You know, like that these things out that we're like, "Oh, I've won today," you know. And it's like from doing nothing to that, even for my wife was like, "That's a bit much, is that?" In it, you know. But I continued with it because I knew that. Well, I didn't know. I just thought something needs to change, and I wanted to use that specifically for because I knew if I mastered this, I could get over the tablets. Yeah. So you started on this sort of like basic program then so did what, what happened then did it escalate did did you go on to another program because clearly something happened and triggered inside you so what how, how did that unfold so i did a four four week program was it was a 28 day challenge whatever it was that was the first one and then you go on to a 90 day which is more goal setting specific around something that you want to achieve or five things you want to achieve actually it is in different areas of your life and i put that down as my number one priority. That's what I want to do. And never told anybody, never told the group, never told my wife, never told anybody. You know, I just thought I'm just, I'm doing this and I'm doing it for me. And um, yeah, that, that was the start of this is it for me. This is where it changes. When you say the number one priority and this is where it changes, what, what do you mean by that? Getting off the drugs? Yes, exactly that. Uh, so what what did you do then to to start this transformation of, of getting off drugs that you've been on now for what? It's got to be what eight year something yeah. like that at this time. Yeah, yeah, eight years, twenty thirteen. Well, yeah, so it's twenty twelve, twenty thirteen. When I'm when I when I was on them, it was yeah twenty. So we're now twenty twenty two. So good good part of nearly ten years. Um, so I used the tools and techniques in that program. So every week we get a new, there was a new mindset thing, a new thing to work on, mastering your mind, mastering your mood, your emotions, that kind of thing. And I used the tools and techniques in there to, to just focus down on stop taking the tablets. And, and the thing that never worked for me was the reducing. And I was always told that it was dangerous to just stop. So I was petrified of, if I just stop these things, I'm just going to die. So where do I go? Like, what do I do here? Because I can't just take two less every week because that just don't work for me. I'm, I'm an all in or nothing kind of guy, you know, and, and that's just how I am. So I went from on the first day of that 90 days, I, I reduced them by a half. So I went from 30 a day to, to 15. And I thought I can survive on 15 tablets a day. I'm not, you know, it's, it's, it's just ridiculous that amount. Um, and then I went from 15. The following day, I went down to like seven. And, and I set myself a rule, and the rule was the number that I took the previous day, I couldn't take no more than that the following day. So it was like a little game that I played. So if I if I dared to only take five, the following day I could only take five. And it was like 30 days in to the, um, to the 90 days, and I, and I was off them. What, complete, completely off? Any, any side effects, anything like any cravings? No, so I thought I was. I thought I was. It was. It was hard. It, you know, it was hard to do. My my legs just constantly ached. I felt like I had no energy. I was lethargic. I was shaking. I was sweating. It's an opiate. You know, it's like coming off heroin. It was. It was ridiculous. It was. It was a difficult thing to do. I'd be lying if I said yes. I used my mindset and my personal development, and it it just was like that. It was hard work, um, but I did it. You know, and it was. It was that thirty days and. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe that I was somebody that didn't do that. You know, can you imagine? Like, all them years, this had been my life. This was who I was almost. It was almost this thing that surrounded me in secret, you know, uh, and I could let go of it, and it was unbelievable. I watched a video by uh, James Corden, and is it James Shetty? And he was talking about this balloon that you hold on to and and you 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 let go of this balloon and you keep hold of it becomes wilted and you need to let go of that and that's why I wanted to do this because that's what I feel like that is it's an old wilted balloon that I need to just let go of you know um and yeah I was, I was so proud of myself for for doing that you know I mean that's amazing I mean Matt, well, well done for getting to that point un un unbelievable you know and all within 30 days from your setting a goal which comes back to why goal setting in business and life is important. But also it sounds to me like by having the goal, 
by having someone to hold you accountable for achieving your goal and doing them in little sort of like increments and bite-sized steps and not going all in, you've weaned yourself off them and now, now you're off. So did you stay off the drugs at that yeah. point? Yeah, so I had I had twice I had a, a bump in the road and I, I knew why this happened. And because you think every time you, you get an illness or you're poorly or something, you get these you get tablets prescribed or you buy them or whatever, you know, you've, you've got flu, you'll go and get a beach and what, well, I don't know. Um, so anytime I got ill or I was in pain, it was really difficult because I've got that physical thing of picking that up out of a packet. It sounds ridiculous. And putting that in my mouth and it was sort of reenacting what, I used to do, do you know? Uh, and there was a couple of points where I, because you, you forget all the years of how difficult that was. You forget that it was so hard to come off them and, and that just becomes a, a distant memory. And there was a couple of times where I'd had them a couple of times and I had to snap myself out of it and go, what are you doing? Like, just just get out and get rid of them, get them completely out of, out of your sight, out of your mind, out of your house. So you don't have the option to do that, you know? Um, so yeah, it was. It has been a. It's been a difficult journey. I've had a few bumps in the road. I'd be a liar if I said it was all plain sailing straight from there. But yeah, as of now, um, I'm, I'm all these. I don't even know how many years it is. It, that that will have been two thousand and twenty, uh, probably twenty twenty two at that point. So yeah. yeah. So we've. we've well, I mean, massive congratulations on getting to that point. But I mean, for me, this is just. This is just proof in the pudding that mindset, personal development, changing your circle of influence, getting new knowledge, getting new motivation, setting goals, working on yourself, developing yourself and breaking habits. You know, you know, I talk a lot about breaking habits and many of us have got these ruts, haven't we? where all they are are bad habits. We're just used to bad habits, which is like you've just said, you know, you're used to going to a, a packet, popping it out, that in itself is a habit. Yeah. Not taking the drugs, that in itself is a daily habit that needs to be broken, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Okay, so you, you're off the drugs for the first time in best part of 10 years. Um, that must have felt incredible. Did you, did you tell anyone? Did you, you know, did you celebrate it? Because it needed celebrating, I would have thought. Do you get what I mean? Yeah, it's, it's a massive achievement, isn't it? Did you share it with anybody? I shared it with... So so after the 90 days in that programme, we went to uh, an event which was share your, share your wins, share what you've done this quarter. Um, and it was like, it was uh, honestly, the energy in that room was unbelievable. It was like clapping, everybody clapping as you walk up and there were music playing and everybody was, you know, it was sort of upbeat. And um, yeah, I'd set it on microphone look, nobody knows this. I didn't even put it in the group, but this is what I've done this last 90 days. And the cheers I got, there were people crying. It was honestly, it was so emotional, but like, I had no idea people cared. Do you know, does that make sense? Like, I, I just thought that this was a dirty little secret that I had that, that shouldn't be shared really, because it's embarrassing for one. I was embarrassed by it. And then that's why I didn't tell nobody. But then the, the the response I got from that was like, wow, these people are really bothered about how well I've done, you know? Um, and there was no judgment, no judgmental thing there. And, and I mean, this is, I suppose that'll always stay with me. I'm nervous now. I'm nervous because I know that this is going to be released and people are going to know my little secret that I had for all them years, you know? Because a lot of, you know, I'm quite well known in your community, Craig. I'm quite well known online now because of your your help and your support. I'm quite, you know, I've got a lot of people that are going to watch this and not know this about me. Yeah. And but listen, this is what we said at the beginning of this episode, isn't it? That you you know you wanted to come on here and open up and be transparent and and share something. And one, it's testament to you and the people so far that have helped you to get to where you are. Don't forget, but also. It's not just about you, is it, this? You, you've overcome that. You know, you're here to help and support other people. You've just said that you didn't realise there were people out there that actually wanted to help and support you because you thought you were on your own with your dirty little secret. But really, yeah. when you're open and honest and transparent with people, 
there are people out there that want to help. And that's exactly why you're doing this episode now, because you want to help other people overcome whatever challenges they've got. Might not be drugs, might not be alcohol, might be not be any of that. It might just be that they're in a bad place. They've made bad decisions. They've got debt, perhaps. They might have got guilt. They might have got, they might be grieving. Who knows what's going off behind closed doors? Nobody knows, do we? We don't, no, we don't. And it's uh, it's so difficult, isn't it? And I suppose women are better this, the, the, at this than men, historically. We don't talk. And, I mean, as a result of that, um, I don't know if you remember this, Craig, but, I mean, I, I got big into goal setting at that point. That was my point of, um, I know that this works because I've proved it. So let's create some goals and let's hit these goals. Um, and I ended up setting a goal to create a men's mental health walk and talk group, which was a massive win for me. Um, and I set this group up and I, I, I turned up at a field. Nobody were there. It was like empty. I'd rang my wife and said, look, this hasn't worked. Bear in mind, I've had hundreds of messages about this thing that people were going to turn up. Turned up at a field. Nobody were there. I rang my wife and my wife said, what are you going to give up now? And it was like them things, them moments of, of accountability of when somebody just pushes you. And I, I went live on Facebook and just said, look, I'm here. I'm walking around the field. I'm on my own. Please let's not have this next week. You know, I, I would like somebody to talk to. And I, I got 15, 20 guys walking around the field that following week. And it was like, these people are coming of, for something that I've created. And I've always had this in me. I, I just used that, them tablets and just coasted through life, like I said, and I really didn't need to. Yeah. Okay. So now this journey, you know, you're off, you're off the drugs, which is the main thing. And it were about, it must have been around this time where we started chatting because I remember seeing them uh, Facebook lives of you walking around and having your men's chat group. And we swapped a few messages, didn't we? So, yeah. so talk to us about the next chapter and the next part of this journey. Cause it's don't, it don't stop here, does it? We're continuing with this. Yeah. So I then, obviously knew the goal setting work, knew all that, the mindset, the personal development, that all that stuff I had. Uh, I won't say nailed because I think it's a consistent journey that I'll always be working on. Um, but I was working on my mindset and personal development, should we put it that way. And the business was still not where I wanted it to be. Um, I was trying to work on my business. I was trying my best to implement everything, but I didn't have the knowledge um, and the accountability to push through with that and, and make it work. And uh, I know we'd swap messages almost for a year, Craig, prior to me joining the inner circle, but um, it was it was a long process that I was with another coach and I, I knew that I wanted to come over to you and it was um, it was one of them. And, and I waited that out and then I did what I said I would do, which was, which was join the inner circle. And that's where the next step of this, this continues yeah so if we rewind and we look at this journey you dip your toe with this electric electricians forum group and that helped you and were a big positive for where you were and the knowledge and the level that you were at in your personal development and your business you've yeah. taken that on board you've used that took yourself to a new level and realized there's more to come so what you've done now is you've worked on, and rightly so, the number one key to everyone's success, which is them. You've worked on yourself. You've worked on your mindset. You've worked on your personal development. You've now got yourself off the drugs. So you know that that coaching worked. The missing link really, wasn't it, was the business side because you've been developing yeah. yourself, but, but really it was the business that needed developing now. So yeah. this is where... You started my Inner Circle program in May 2023, didn't you? I did. So why why did you apply for Inner Circle in the first place, business-wise? So I'd seen, I, I'm like my new circle of influence, my new circle of friends almost were online. So I'd, I've got a lot of people that I know of different trades, different industries, different sectors that I follow, they follow me, whatever. Uh, and I was seeing results that they were getting. Um, and it looked to me like exactly what I needed at that point in time. It was like, look, I, I need to be working on them areas of my business to 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 make it more successful, more streamlined, 
uh, make more profit, you know, um, and that's where it, where it stemmed from. Other people, and I'd also followed you for I'd probably followed you for a year before I reached out to you, Craig. So probably two years. I'd known who you were and what you were about and, and sort of liked your content and followed you and things like that. So at that point I thought, right, let's just, uh, let's apply for the inner circle and see if I get in. Yeah. Brilliant. So you, you came on, you came onto my inner circle and, and we started and, and what, what did we start off with, with month one? What do I start off my program with? Month one was mindset and personal development. And, and to be honest with you, I'm thinking I'm joining this new program and I've got a full day's session on mindset and personal development. The thing that I've just spent three years previous working on, you know, and I was thinking, is this going to be a bit of a waste of time for me? Because uh, I all I probably already know all that kind of stuff. And it just proved to me that you, you never know everything. You know, there was so much shared in that that I, I didn't think about and I didn't know and I didn't, you know, uh, which I've took away and implemented. So, yeah, it was a, a great, great session. And you, you, you obviously you do the, the business evaluation on that day and it's quite, um, it's, it's quite a, I don't know how to put this into words, but a, a realisation hits on that day, doesn't it? You know, you're sort of like, I've got my work to do and um yeah but it gives you some some great confidence in the fact that look at all these areas i am going to be working on in the business and um if i could do the whole thing again i would yeah 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 and this is why you know people say to me you know craig i, I just need help with working less hours i'm working 90 hours a week just show me how to work less hours craig right I'm, I'm not making any profit. Just show me how to make more money. Craig, right? I'm doing everything manually. I'm staying up till midnight doing all the paperwork quotes. Just show me how to systemize your business. And you can't because the mindset is not there, is it? People aren't. For, for people to be able to build and grow and scale their own businesses, they first of all got to build and grow and scale them. You can't grow and take your business to a, a place and a level that, it's never been to if you're not ready and prepared yourself to get yourself there because your mindset is not in the right place. And I think Steve, because you've been investing into your mindset for two or three years prior to this, and you'd had such an incredible life changing result in getting off them drugs, you fitted absolutely perfect in that first month at Inner Circle. And you almost started, in my opinion, to start to work as a bit of a mentor, I suppose, to other members who were just coming into this journey of personal development and thinking it were all like woo-woo and all that lot like yeah. we all used to think. So talk to us about the importance of, of mindset. Why is it important? And why do you think it's important that no matter, even if you've only got a, a, a millimetre or more knowledge or motivation than someone else, that you should share it because I encourage people to share that knowledge and become mentors. So why why is mindset so important to every single business owner? Because there's a saying that that um, you say you say quite regularly, Craig, and it's it's stuck with me. And it's the the problem is never the business; the problem is always the mindset of the business owner, which is so so true. Because if you're setting yourself up for me every day to win setting yourself up with these targets to to make you feel good before you get out of your house to sort of push you in the right direction you're listening to people that have done the things that you want to achieve and it's it's just putting all that positive positive attitude into you before you've even stepped foot out of your door um you're just getting in a head start on everybody else and you you feel good um i suppose uh, the mindset and personal development for me is is how you're changing your mindset when things go wrong as well. So like things happening um, for me, uh, not to me, you know, and, and having that attitude makes you to be able to make decisions quicker, to be able to spin things around when it's not going your way, to push you forward for it to be working for you. And that, it, that as you know, in business, it, it's, we will always have problems that we will always encounter things that are unexpected. We will always encounter them things and it's how we look at them, how we see them, how we sort of go, right, that's happened. How are we going to move forward from that with the right mindset instead yeah. of, Oh, this has happened to me. Oh, I can't cope. 
I can't do this no more, you know, and, and that's the sort of mindset where I was at previous. It was just like, uh, well, why me? Why me? And, 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 you know, I always get that, that people saying to me, Steve, you'd land on it. You'd land on your feet if you fell out of a plane. And I, my belief is that doesn't happen by accident because I, I feed myself with the positive stuff all the time. I look for the good and, and I tend to get that back. Um, which you could say is the universe or that, you know, that kind of thing that people, again, um, look at as in, um, yeah, right, you, you know what I mean, the universe is working for me or whatever, you know, the secret. Um, but when you just work on being happy, I'm in that positive mindset, putting that out there and things start to happen for you, then... Um, yeah, it, it, you you just want it more, so you just start working working more on that. Yeah, it's moving away from having that victim mindset, isn't it? That we've all had. I, I used to have it. I, you know, blame everybody. Every, every, everything's my. I only get bad luck. I don't get any luck in this world. It's all bad luck. You know, things come in threes and all that bullshit that people come out with. Well, we know now. While ever you keep telling yourself, and while ever your mindset's in that state, nothing's going to change. So we, we worked on mindset and personal development, a big A. Share with us a couple of other areas that massively well help your on in a circle in terms of a business development point of view. <laughs> Where do we begin? Uh, there's so much on in a circle, but um, yeah, for, for me, the, uh, the, the automation, uh, marketing um, w was incredible. I've now got um, systems within my business uh, that, uh, you know, I've got, I've got uh, automation within, like, so somebody signs up to um, get a quote for a boiler and they go through a series of automations, um, which I never never thought possible. But bearing in mind at the beginning of this podcast, I've never even turned a computer on. Um, it was, um, yeah, so there's, there's so much in there in the inner circle that, that really transformed the finance for me because I, I've never really focused on that. It was, like, mind-blowing, you know, um there, there was i i don't even know where to begin with this craig this is a really difficult question uh because there is so much I, I, social media as well so i'd done all this training on social media and and how it works for a small local business all that kind of thing and then i come into that session i come away from it like wow who would have even thought that i had no idea but how simple to implement you know and it's them things for me that um yeah, and I mean, I've come out of the inner circle super happy with what I've achieved in that, and the, the bunch of guys that I went through it with were all amazing. Um, I'm glad that you saw me as a sort of mentor in that process, Craig, because uh, I used to, as you know, I used to go with WhatsApp group with my motivational speeches on a morning, telling people um, what they should be doing, all that kind of stuff. But I loved the whole process, mate. I loved it from start to finish. And as I said, I'd sit the whole thing again uh, if, I, if I had the opportunity. Yeah, I think one of the big, big things that everybody can see that you've took to like a duck to water and where you've got masses of benefit and not just in terms of lead generation, in terms of other benefits is, is the video marketing side, isn't it? Can't believe I didn't even mention that. <laughs> um, yeah, the video marketing for me, like I'd done videos prior to the inner circle and, and sort of but i'd done them i'd done a little welcome video on my website a few how to's um but it it really took it to the next level with the things that you teach i started getting noticed um i started getting a bit of brand awareness out there people knew who i was um i started making connections uh, uh, you know through you craig you, you know we were sharing, I was sharing my stuff through your profile and uh, people were getting in touch with me and creating that opportunity. Uh, and I suppose now that the opportunities that have been created through the video marketing, I believe, has been absolutely phenomenal. Yeah. And and just alone, the video marketing side alone is a lot of mindset, isn't it? Because there'll be, you know, nine, nine out of ten people who come onto Inner Circle say, Craig, I am not shooting videos. Do not get me shooting videos. Why? Oh, I sound daft. I look daft. My mate's going to rip the piss. You know, I've got a dodgy accent. I don't know what to say and I stutter or, or whatever. And I'm like, these are all limiting beliefs that you've got, right? We've got to overcome with the mindset. We've got to overcome that shift and then start to do videos and then you get the benefits. 
and by you being introduced to different people that you know we've managed to introduce you to and the confidence that you've now got from shooting videos you know you've even been on fixed radio aren't you on andy cam show as well as an example yeah 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 so all that lot is building he's building from that mindset and personal development and i suppose just wrapping on that journey in a circle you know we can't go without saying that you actually over that 12 month grew your business by a 168 percent over the course of that 12 month on top of everything else that you've been working on behind scenes with other people so 168 percent growth is is incredible I was super proud of that. It was, yeah, it was uh, amazing. Um, and and like to see where my business was at to where it is now uh, is incredible. I'm always getting commented from customers, you know, there's, uh, it's so reliable. And, and we're going from writing addresses on scraps of wood in a van, uh, literally a bit of 2B1 was my, you know, I just cut a new bit of 2B1, it's crazy, uh, to an automated system where everything's just automated. I've got somebody answering phones for me, who inputs the jobs into my diary, who I just turn up to work on them on and do the thing that I love is uh, incredible. It's been absolutely incredible. And that's only going to grow. It's only going to improve because I've still got work to do that I've learned on the inner circle that I haven't had a chance to yet to implement. And uh, that will just forever continue. Yeah. Yeah. Well, listen, personal development is a never ending journey, a con continued progress, isn't it? We know, we know that. Yeah. Okay, so Steve, I suppose that brings us up to today, up to this point, up to, I suppose, this chapter closing and another one about to start. We don't know what that is, I'm guessing for yourself. But what you do know is what a day in the life of Steve's personal development looks like. So would you be happy to share some tips or strategies or things that you actually do on a daily basis we, that that may well help other people just make that first little shift in thinking do you know what i need to i need help you know craig got help 18 years ago all these people joining in a circle the other coach that you work for and the community group they're all help and supportive groups we don't mind where you get the help and support from but ultimately you can't help someone that doesn't want to be helped. So they've got to make that shift in the first place. So what, what do you do on a daily basis that other people could potentially take on board and start to work with? Well, I believe hundred percent, it starts with a morning and evening routine, but the, the, with me sharing this, it, I, I just want to put out there that don't start with this amount of, morning and evening routine because if you want to make this work for you start with just the one thing uh, but i certainly share um share my, my insights into what i do now so um as soon as i open my eyeballs my my choice is to get out of bed at six o'clock in the morning um i then journal uh, about what i'm, I'm going to do for the day uh, and that's prompted journaling for me so that's a series of questions that is written out that i ask myself daily um what I'm what I want to achieve that day, my number one priority, my top three wins, somebody I want to help that day, for instance. There's there's loads of different questions, but there's all sorts of journals out there that you can buy with these prompted questions on. Um that for me just sets me up to uh, get myself up and motivated then. Um so I get up and get in my ice bath in the garden. Um so my ice bath is I do three minutes in my ice bath, straight out up. Um, go for a walk so I walk my dog while listening to motivational content and then home and that's that's my morning routine done when I get back I absolutely do my wife's heading because I'm not kidding I'm like come on what we're gonna do today we're we gonna win what what we're we gonna win at today love it you know and she's like uh oh, just sit down just give me 10 minutes will you you know um but I'm on fire I'm ready for day I'm ready to go and win you know um and then I do my day's work, we get home, have time with kids. Uh, and then on an evening, I'm, I'm journaling again. So my only action on an evening is to journal. That's my wind down. Um, and that's reviewing my day. What what happened through the day? I've, I picked five wins from that day, no matter how small. So always focusing on my wins. Um, because once I know what I, what I feel a win is, and that's different for everyone, by the way, 
then I can focus my energy on doing more of that. So obviously, if I know that I'm winning by, and that could be so much so so sinister. I had this conversation the other day, and it was like um, getting my shoes out ready to go to the gym the next day was a win for me because it it got me set up for the next day. So I use that as a win. Um, it could be massive things as well, you know. Um, so yeah, that's a, that's a life in the day of of my personal development. Yeah, amazing. Thank you. Steve, couple of questions. What do you think would have happened to you, right? And be honest, what do you think could have happened to you? And what do you think would have happened to your business if you would have not invested into your mindset and your personal deve development and your well-being when you started this journey back in 2020? Because it's four years ago now, this, and you've come a long way in four years. But arguably... You were almost three times as much as that, a drug addict. So what would have happened if you'd have not continued and you found this personal development? Well, my business had got to a point where it had nearly, it, it was it was on the floor. <laughs> you know, it was literally, it couldn't get any worse. I had no clients. I had no, you know what I mean? Like I had no return clients. I had no work coming in, no leads, no nothing. If I'd have just continued with that, I'd have probably just lost everything. I'd have probably been working for somebody else doing uh, a, a, just a day-to-day -day job doing something I hated, you know, um, and not been that influential person that people sort of uh, look up to. And I get this regular, I get people messaging me and reaching out to me naturally without knowing this story, Craig. You know, it's just they've, they've seen me come from being air and plumbing and heating as I was then to the boiler doctor. And it's like, how have you done it, Steve? You know, and, I, and so I've already got that sort of awareness out there but nobody knows about that you know what i've shared today obviously you do now um but I, I i'm a firm believer it would i would have had none of this i would have had none of this um and i'd have felt a big hypocrite as well you know like that that was part of the problem like when i'm doing it you know i've joined that program and i won that little trophy that i told you about being the um you know the member of the year which was fantastic and then i've got this big secret that i needed them to just get out of bed on the morning uh, felt a big hypocrite and it was yeah so i'm proud of myself mate i really am proud of what i've achieved in this last four years um and i, I believe i'd have been nowhere in answer to your question yeah yeah that's and, and that's the power of personal development and for those that sort of like really take it on board and soak it up like a sponge it, it is literally and i know it's a cliche and people use it all the time but it is life transforming transform my life transform yours transform millions of other people around the world but i suppose sometimes it gets to a point where until the pain is hard enough until the pain is too much to bear people don't take action they put up with it don't they I'm smiling here, Craig, because I reached out to you the other day when I had toothache, uh, and, I, and I was petrified at dentist. And I had toothache, and uh, you'd said to me, "Until the pain is too hard to bear." And I, I, I'm chuckling here because they were exact words that we use, but it's true, so true in life in everything that we do. Um, you know, you, you 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 just put up with it until the until the pain is too much, and then uh, and then you need the support. How great would it be if we just reached out before that that pain hit or 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 the pain hit hard enough to for, for us to need to take action. Yeah. And I suppose that that one line that you've just dropped in there just leads on nicely to, you know, if anybody does want to reach out to you, Steve, and I'm sure there will be because there's already people that, you know, message you and, and WhatsApp you and or, already. But having listened to this and, and seen how, impressive and let's let's use it let's butter it up because it is it's impressive what you've done over the last four years all right then previous years we, we've we've made some poor decisions but one we all have the thing is you the pain got that much that you had to do something about it and you have and you've turned it completely around and honestly for, for me I, I know what you've been through and I know what it takes. And I honestly salute you. I take me out off to you for what you've done. So for other people that are sat there thinking, blimey, do you know, if Steve can do it, if Craig can do it, if other people can do it, I can do it, but I don't know where to start. I don't know what to do. What would you advise them? 
and what where would you tell them to start first yeah so so starting for from um a standing start and not having no idea where to turn would be to just choose one thing to to start with a morning routine that's different to what you're normally doing uh that'll have a positive influence on you and that now for me, that has to be personal to you. I think everybody's morning routine depends on a number of factors and it depends on your lifestyle, your family lifestyle, like getting up and going to the gym at, at seven o'clock and leaving your missus at home to get all the kids ready for school. Ain't going to work in a busy family. Do you know what I mean? Like you need to make your morning routine work for, for you and the people around you is, is my belief anyway. Uh, and I'm talking from personal experience, <laughs> you know, um, but there is just starting with that one thing. Now, now, when I first started reading about personal development and morning routine, mindset, that, all that kind of stuff, I jumped in with three feet and went, right, I need to do this, do this, do this, do this. And I could never get a morning routine that worked for me. And it was because I was putting too much into, into the morning routine without uh, thinking, actually, let's just get that one thing right first. So my my... my the thing I'd say is just get that one thing right for you, whether that be listening to motivational content, getting some fresh air, something as simple as going for a minute walk outside your house is better than doing nothing, you know, and you can build on it. So just choose one thing, build on it, get that nailed, build on it, get that nailed, build on it. And, and that would be how I would get into it and how I did get into it and start having this regular morning routine. Yeah, yeah, great advice, sound advice. And Steve, for anyone that wants to sort of like maybe reach out to you or contact you, what's the best way of them being able to do that? If because of the nature of this podcast, you know, some people might want to reach out kind of privately. But yeah, I'm I'm Steve Thompson on Facebook and Instagram um, uh, and the Boiler Doctor York on TikTok, um, Instagram and Facebook, any of them. But um, yeah, if you want to reach out to me privately, Stephen Thompson, get me on Messenger um and, and i'll help uh, or advise anybody that needs help out there if I can help one of you um and please don't be embarrassed by whatever you've got going on uh, i'm here to help uh, and I'll, I'll help any one of you out there that are, that are listening or watching this yeah fantastic well listen steve first of all congratulations on your own success and reaching the levels that you've you, you've got to because it, it has been tough for you and thank you for being honest and, and sharing what you've shared because you didn't have to do that. You don't have to do that this at this point of this journey. You know, you've decided that it's time for you to come out and do it. You know, nobody's going to judge you. You know, there's no, there's no reason why you've got to be nervous about it. Every single one of us has made mistakes that we regret at some point in our lives. But it's like we've been saying throughout the whole of this and the messaging, it's what you do beyond that into it. it's what you do and how you turn your life and your business around and make it for the better and that's exactly what you've done so absolutely massive massive well done thank you craig i appreciate that mate well who would have thought that a freak accident as steve getting out of his car and pulling his back 14 years ago would have led him down the path of him becoming addicted to painkillers and prescription drugs just think of the damage that steve's caused to his body to his mind to his business and to his loved ones but thankfully steve sought help he got the coaching he got the circle of influence he got the accountability he got the communities together to help him to pull him out of where he were to get him to another level and then he's ascended up the different levels of coaching to get him to a point where he's at today, where he's grown his business by 168%. Now, the whole purpose and message and point of this episode is for Steve and myself to highlight that, listen, business and life can throw curveballs at us at any time. T times where we are not expecting to be hit up and low blood. Sometimes business and life can bring us to his knees, but we've got to be able to be strong enough to be able to get off his knees and fight back. New levels bring new devils. So it doesn't matter what level you are at in your business, in your life, you're going to move to a whole new one, which brings a whole lot of new challenges and problems that we've got to overcome. 
We want you to feel safe in our Trades Freedom Club group and community. So if you're not already a member of our group, please click the link in and around the description of this episode and head over to our Facebook group. And in our group and community, you will find thousands of trades and construction business owners that are all there to help and support each other, not just when things are going well and to give you a pat on the back for all the wins and the results that you're achieving, but we're also there to help and support you when times get tough. So whether you're on your knees right now, whether you're in a negative rut, when things are transcribing against you and the world and business seems to be putting pressure and overwhelming you, you've got to reach out. Reach out to Steve, reach out to me, put a post in our Trades Freedom Club Facebook group and tell us that you need help and support. We can't help you unless you tell us we need help. And there's no judgment in our group. Nobody's going to judge you. Nobody's going to point the finger at you. Nobody's going to have a pop at you or snigger at you. That is not what our culture is all about. If Steve can be brave enough to go through what he's been through and share his journey with you like he's just done, that only a handful of people in his entire existence knows about, if he can come out and do that, then surely you can raise your hand and say, Craig, Steve, we're struggling a little bit at the minute. Can we have some help? And we'll gladly help you. So click the link in and around the description, head over to our Facebook group, come and join our positive community and let's help you get you, your business and your life to the levels that you deserve. I'll see you over on next week's episode. And remember, the results that you're looking for is in the work that you're avoiding. Thank you.